good enough so let me start with my introduction my name is surendra having 9 plus years of experience in this testing world more into automation testing using selenium and other related components as we all know that today we are going to study about mobile automation testing using apm so first of all before jumping on to the actual topic so let us see why apm is that much required right why apm or mobile automation testing tool is required so if you clearly observe guys these days majority of the applications or request from the customer is for a mobile app on android and ios so popularity of the mobile apps is becoming wider and majority of the people are using mobile applications so every org or every company is targeting for their mobile applications so they should have a mobile application compatible for both android and ios that's what every organization is targeting so that too like if you have an idea on manual regression testing concept so before that why automation testing is required why automation is required for a web applications see the simple point out over here why it is required for a particular web application means whenever they are multiple releases to execute previous release items we are using automation testing and the main advantage is it will save execution time right that's what the main beauty of an automation testing so that's the reason why we are automating the web applications the similar way these days mobile applications also have a multiple releases to support regression stuff we are trying to automate mobile applications as well in the current market we do have a different types of mobile automation testing tools among all the tools available in the market people are preferring okay so people are preferring apm why majority of the people are using this tool why not any other tools right we should know basically why people are targeting only this apm why not any other tools so there are too many advantages are there few among them are usually 95% of the real world they are automating their web applications using selenium so they want to build a common framework which will work for mobile and web applications so it should build on top of selenium APM is a tool which was built on top of a selenium it means if we are a good at selenium then we can cover or i can consider if we are a good at selenium and if i have a, any application with me i can cover up to 60% of automation using selenium concepts itself you no need to learn anything new you can automate up to 60% of your mobile application remaining 40% to automate we need to know about some advanced concepts in apm like 
swipe. So usually for every mobile, basically there is a horizontal swipe or vertical scroll functionality. So there are certain functionalities which are related to a mobile. In order to access those things, we should be familiarized with the APM and how we are going to use those commands. So that's the reason. So the base for this particular mobile automation testing is a Selenium. If you are good at Selenium, then you can automate up to 60% of mobile applications. This is going to be good. And the next point is using APM, we can automate Android and iOS operating systems. For suppose, if my mobile application is an Android operating system, I can target using my APM tool. And if my uh, if my organization is targeting an app which is specific to an iOS, even I can automate it using my APM. So it is an open source tool which supports multiple operating systems. That's the reason these days majority of the organizations are using APM as their mobile test automation tool. Okay, cool. Good. So before jumping on, am I clear for you all till now or any questions for me? Vijay, Srikant, Shishang, Pallavi and Jenis. Am I clear for you all till now or do you have any questions for me on this? If you... Good. If you have any questions, you can unmute yourself or we do have a chat option here. You can just ping me your questions in a chat window. Okay, good. Done the deal. So this is an overview about this APM. Then, so the next and most important point which we need to consider is what are types of, yeah, please go ahead. So we can integrate this APM with your Selenium framework or you can create a separate framework for APM too. See here, there are two points. First, suppose my application is having a web portal, like I can open it on a browser. That's the first thing. And the second thing is, there is a separate app on an Android and a separate app on an iOS. See here, if you observe your application is covering desktop web automation, mobile app automation. As your application is supporting these two, then you will create a common framework which will trigger on a mobile apps and a desktop web application. For suppose, if your organization is a developing only a mobile app itself, then you no need to integrate Selenium in place basically, okay? You no need to focus on a web automation. It ultimately depends on the project needs whatever you are working, okay? Yes. Yes, yes. So if you can integrate it with Selenium, you know, majority of the cases wherever you want, you can use it. The combination of these things, we can use it, okay? Done the deal. And then the next point out over here is okay. So, okay. So, what are all the various types of mobile apps we have? See, basically, there are certain terminology which we need to follow in the real world, guys. So, whenever we are automating a mobile application, people usually will ask, Do you have any experience in automating a native app, hybrid app? web app these kind of a terminologies people will use in a real world so first of all let us see what exactly the differences between these apps so the first thing is a web app if we are opening bookmyshow.com on your phone chrome browser then we can treat it as a web app okay then we can treat that particular functionality as a web app so it means 
the application you are accessing using a url itself the way how i am opening book my show here the same way i'm trying to open my book my show on my mobile browser that's the thing i haven't installed my app i'm just opening book my show on my mobile browser that we can call it as a web app okay and we can't download the web apps from the app store or a play store we need to have an application url using which we can open on the mobile browser so here the web app you know guys it's going to be the most simplest part the reason is for suppose your organization has a desktop web application and even it supports mobile web app also we don't have any specific apps which we can download from play store assume that this is a scenario your application is having only an app so the best example for this one is see uh, so this is a website this website will open on a browser on my desktop and as well as a browser on my mobile so let me open some other app okay smart john okay let it load so here what is going to happen assume that you have automated that application on your desktop so if the functionality and all the features will be almost one and the same right the features and the functionality will be one and the same then you no need to create separate script for mobile web application whatever the script we prepared for desktop we can reuse it so we are going to reuse or i can say i'm going to leverage the solution whatever i have prepared for my desktop app to a web app that's the beauty with the web applications 90 percent of the test script we can reuse it but these days majority of the clients are looking for apps which they needs to download from a play store then it's going to be either a native app or a hybrid app if we are downloading any app from play store we can call it as a native or a hybrid app good that's fine then what is the difference between a native app and as well as a hybrid app so the simple point is native app everything will be within the app itself whereas for a hybrid app if we perform some click operation a mobile browser window will be opened by the app so this app has native view and as well as a web view also okay native view and as well as a web view also that's the difference between a native and as well as a hybrid app both the apps you can find it in an app store or a play store you can download it and you can perform your operations these are all the three different types of an apps in the real world mobile automation testing means it's going to be either on a native app or on an hybrid app itself it's nothing much uh, on top of these two if you are a targeting for mobile application then it's going to be either on a native app or on a hybrid app itself cool good so before moving on to a further topic am i clear for you all till now or do you have uh, any questions for me on this 
Viji, Shashank, Srikant, uh, Pallavi, Meghali, and Janice. Am I clear for you all or any questions for me on this? Good. Now, the next and a small point of which we need to consider is how can we test our application on the apps? Do we need to download the apps from the Play Store? Right. So the point out over here is whenever you are developing the app, if you are working on an Android or an iOS, developers will provide us the latest app file information, which we will use in our APM script so that it will recognize and it will install the app for us on the targeted mobile device okay on the target mobile device that's it it's going to be most the simplest thing basically so we will get the app from the developers we will pass on that app information to our uh, apm script which will recognize it and it will perform the operations on it good then what are all the concepts we are going to study as part of this training program all right even we should know what are all the concepts we are going to study as part of this training program so the complete training program is categorized into two parts one is for android and the second is for ios whatever the topics we are covering on an android everything we are going to cover on an ios so how it's going to be means we will pick few scenarios which are on the app like text field switches radio buttons and then images scroll tap etc all the type of web elements present on Android and iOS applications we are going to study okay we are going to study all these types of web elements or different kinds of an options basically how to select a value from a drop down how to click on a button how to check a radio button uncheck a checkbox whatever this um, you know whatever the operations you will encounter on any kind of a native app or an hybrid app we are going to cover all those things examples on native app examples on a hybrid app examples on a web app followed by we will study an overview on a cucumber bdd framework we will create a framework which is a common for desktop and a app automation using cucumber and we will consider a couple of applications for our practice and we will create a scripts in those a framework and later we will integrate our framework with jenkins and a sas lab too okay so basically sas lab is a cloud uh, devices um, you know if you want to execute your test scripts remotely you can do it using a source lab so how you can establish a connection with the source lab and all those things we are going to study within our training program okay so we are going to study all these concepts within our training program and additionally we will cover a couple of sessions on core java maybe you know 
to at max uh, two sessions on a core java we will see an overview on a class and uh, object uh, inheritance variables all the core java concepts within a two sessions we are going to study and then we will jump on to apm everything we <clears throat> everything we have a detailed running notes here with us you no need to document anything from your end we have a detailed running notes with us which we are going to upload in a google driver on a daily basis and the similar way how we are recording this today's session the similar way i'm going to record uh, the complete session and uh, even i will upload these recordings in a google driver folder you can use these recordings as well okay and moreover in the sessions whenever i am targeting about ios so we will connect to the mac machine and then i will show all the scenarios on a mac so android i will focus on a windows machine and the ios scenarios i will focus on a mac machine okay this is the stuff which we are going to plan and we will try to focus on the framework which is common for both the things okay good done the deal so this is a high level overview on this a training program guys am i clear for you all till now or do you have a, any questions for me on this yes so it's going to be a three weeks session on an average we need a three to four weeks at max okay three to four weeks and it's going to be like uh, how we have a done with our selenium it's going to be more or a practical orientation itself and if you have any kind of a questions we can resolve them within a sessions or we can plan a doubt clarification session over the weekends to clarify all your questions but the words are common from my end if you are practicing all the concepts then you will be in a position to work on mobile automation testing on any kind of a projects you no need to look for any kind of a supports assume that you got a place and if you are practicing everything whatever i am explaining in the sessions you don't need to go for a support definitely you can uh, you can work on your projects but the only thing is you need to practice the stuff what we are dealing and one more thing is i am trying to show uh, these examples on a different kinds of an applications available in a play store or from other sources if you have a, any specific applications which we can practice it's open for you you can tell that we can use those applications in our sessions there is a no specific restriction that i i just want to go with this application whatever the application you are suggesting we can go with that app for our practice okay so it's going to be a two way mutual understanding and we can practice on a different kinds of an applications available in the market okay shishank good done the deal and uh, any further questions for me yeah that's fine see uh, the only difference here is basically native and a hybrid so we can consider this hybrid as a native plus a web app so it means this hybrid app it has everything displaying on an app on top of it assume that if you click on some buttons basically it will render a browser within the app or it will open the browser so it means from the app it is a navigating to a browser so that kind of a concept is available in a hybrid app whereas a native app everything will be displayed within a native app instance itself that's a simple difference between these two hybrid app has a native app instance which is everything displaying on an app followed by there are a few controls if you click on a something it will open it on a browser usually a simple question will rise in our mind what makes us a difference if something is opening on a browser when we are automating an app simple thing is here when you are automating an app if something additionally got open means you need to inform your apm that switch to that particular view and perform that operation without a switching to that view it will definitely fail so that's the reason it's mandatory for you to switch your application view okay it's mandatory for you to switch your application view so you you should identify whether it is a native app or a hybrid app based on that 
you need to start your scripting so moreover once we started working on any kind of an application so just by looking into the app we can understand that see if uh, assume that you are using a whatsapp feature right uh, so whenever we are using a whatsapp feature if i am performing any click operation it's going to open within an app itself right for suppose if someone has a shared me a link uh, uh, stating that some ad specific ad link if someone has shared it if we click on that it will open on a web browser right browser so how you need to switch that your apm don't know that so you need to pass on that mechanism how it should switch to that one and moreover we can consider whatsapp as a, a complete a hybrid app i have just given you an example the hybrid app functionalities and ui is bit differ okay so majority of the hybrid apps these days whatever they are developing they will render the web page within the app itself it's not opening a new screen it's within an app itself they will open uh, the browser like how they are designing okay cool so api testing no i can say so api is for only few people okay so it's not for everyone there are a few sets of people for whom i have a committed uh, for these api testing for those people itself we are going to cover the api testing for others it's going to be a complete stuff on uh, apm and uh, mobile and as well as uh, android and as well as an ios stuff so api is we are targeting for our previous batch students itself whoever already took selenium training from me or any other training for me for them we are offering uh, apm plus api okay cool yeah we will cover if required we will cover a basic introduction on that and depending on a need we will plan accordingly okay if majority of the people are looking for skill set then definitely we will plan accordingly okay good then the deal and uh, any further questions from yes yes see the huh yeah go ahead fine go ahead yeah see the first and most important thing is in order to compare with the tdd i haven't worked on tdd okay but i can tell you what are all the various advantages or why we are targeting for this bdd these days every organization is focusing to have a customized framework on a cucumber bdd itself the reason is because of those feature files whatever the feature files are we are using in a cucumber bdd it's going to be the most important thing for us the reason is usually business analyst within the user stories itself they are creating these feature files for us simply we are using those feature files and we are preparing our test scripts on top of those feature files and then assume that for suppose we use this cucumber bdd framework and i have a automated roughly 100 test cases in my application moving further we got a direction from the client to switch to a complete selenium framework itself not a bdd framework the only thing is nowadays whatever the framework we are working on it's going to be a page object model itself the cucumber framework which we are going to create is also on a page object model itself so as per the new framework structure you can simply copy the code base from this cucumber and uh, you can reuse it on the other frameworks 
okay so it's not you know the code base whatever you are preparing it's not related to the cucumber specific so here we are using a cucumber annotations whatever the stuff i have placed in a cucumber annotation in a regular selenium framework you will place it in a method whatever the stuff we are calling it in a test runner you will call it in a test ng xml file that's the difference so you know definitely whenever you are switching your frameworks after some amount of code completion definitely there will be a rework and this rework is just of more or less of a copy paste itself not recreating your test scripts from the scratch okay that cool then the deal then up to here viji do you have any questions megali jenny's and everyone cool so considering your silence as you all are good so we are going to start our regular sessions from monday at 9 30 pm est okay so we are going to start our regular sessions from monday at 9 30 pm est and there will be change in the session link okay so i will publish the session links to all your email ids so that you can use that link and you can join the session okay cool this is the stuff and what else i need is i will publish this a demo session recording from my end uh pravallika could you please share your gmail id in a chat window and uh, viji could you please uh shrikant viji pravallika shrikant could you please share your uh, gmail ids in a chat window and jenny's shashank i have your email ids pallavi Meghali, I have your email IDs. Okay, you no need to share your email IDs. Okay. Yeah, you're okay. Pravalika, I do have your email ID. Cool. Thank you. Cool. Done the deal, guys. Uh, that's all I have for today. So if you get any emails for registration, just complete your registration by the Monday session and let's start our regular classes from Monday. I will publish this meeting link to your all email IDs. You can join using that okay cool thank you guys thank you very much see you again on monday bye bye